Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for being here. Uh, well, first thing I want to, to do is uh, to thank you, Movia Project, and on especially his coordinator, Sebastian Marcel, for inviting me uh, to be here today. And also, I want to congratulate them for uh, their hard work and, and results they have, they have got, because uh, we have been following kind of a parallel path during the last two years, so I can really understand very well the kind of challenges they have faced and, and overcome. Um, well, before, before we start, let, let me ask you a few questions. Um, how many of you use your mobile phone for something more than just call and text? Please raise your hand. Okay. A lot. And how many of you uh, store any kind of sensitive information inside, like uh, uh, emails, pictures, documents, personal or professional? Okay. Quite a lot, too. And how many of you use uh, biometric authentication in your daily life, in your, in a, on a daily basis? Well. A few, a few, yeah, yeah. Well, we are in a biometric conference, so <laughs> but I can assure you, if, if you ask this question in any other uh, scenario, uh, very, very few people uh, use biometric authentication in their, their daily lives. Um, so the, the goal of this talk is, is simple, is to help your companies or your clients to focus their resources on where they can produce the best results. We are going to see um, which is the, the, the weakest link in the security chain and how uh, mobile phones can introduce new security risks, but also can help us to solve some problems. Well, who we are? Um, literally speaking, we are these five guys, but uh, speaking on a, on a broader sense, Mobile is a company that develops uh, biometric security solutions for, for mobile phones. That's our mission. We, we develop security, but specifically uh, biometric security and only for mobile phones. And our vision is to bring, is bringing the high security to the ordinary people and make it possible to use it when and where they need it. And that's enough of us. So um, over the last years, uh, some significant progress has been made in, in some areas that contribute to make uh, more secure the, the access to, to digital services. Uh, but sometimes we seem to forget that security is like a chain. It is as strong as its weakest link. So uh, sometimes um, we, we see some efforts in well, making more secure transfer protocols and uh, creating hardware that is more resistant to attacks and, and reverse engineering, and uh, better encryption algorithms, um, more restricted access to facilities. Um, okay, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, all this is needed. It's just it shouldn't be the priority. And um, let me tell you a real a real example. It's about a company who claimed uh, that claimed to to have a very secure data storage service. And indeed, they, their servers were placed on a Second World War bunker, uh, protected with all kinds of uh, control access, including biometrics. And, but then the application that, uh, peop that their customers used to upload and download uh, the data uh, was uh, installed on an outdated uh, web and application server with known security bugs. And all the, it was worse. All the information they stored, they, they stored in, in plain, in clear. So why the hell I'm going to try to break the, the physical security of a Second World War bunker when I can access the data with my PC from the other side of the world? So it's like a, if you invest a lot of money trying to secure a window in your, in your house, you install iron bars and you install glass break detectors and so on and so forth, and then you let your, your door, sorry, your door open. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, security can be seen as a pyramid, slices in, into different layers. And from this, the authentication is, is the foundation. It can be seen as the single one most important aspect in the security chain. The first step is always making sure that you are who you say you are. 
if the authentication fails or is too weak, then the upper levels of the pyramid are compromised. Um, well, as, as you probably know, there are mainly three uh, different methods to prove your identity. Something you only know, like passwords or, or pins, uh, something only you have, credit cards, identity cards, and something only you are, all the kinds of biometrics we have seen. From, all, from, from these three, uh, the most common usage method by far is something only you know, or in other words, the traditional passwords. And the average internet user, and Sebastian saw us before, uh, uh, must remember about 15 passwords, and this is, uh, number is, is increasing very quickly. Well, in fact, I have more than 60 passwords. And nothing is wrong with the, with the use of a, of a password. It's not a method that is intrinsically insecure. I mean, it can be very secure as long as some conditions are, are met. It is long, it is random, it, it, it mix uppercase, lowercase, numbers, uh, digits, and it's changed frequently, um, you, uh, don't, you don't share it with other services, and it's never, ever written down. Um, yeah, that's the ideal world, but let's face reality. The human brain is just not designed to work that way. Um, most people just choose a very simple password, uh, their pet name or birthday, birthday and they repeat it for everything, from uh, e-banking to Facebook. Um, a, a study conduct, conducted on 32 million passwords that were hacked from a website called uh, Rockyou, I think, uh, showed, shows that most of the passwords are really weak and, that, and they are vulnerable to uh, dictionary attacks. So. Um, can you, can you guess what was the most uh, common password? Anyone? Uh, no, <laughs> could be. <laughs> but it was, in this case, was one, two, three, four, five. And the second one was one, two, three, four, five, six. And the third was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, at least this was long. And well, the fourth was password and so on and so forth. So you can, you can uh, understand which, which kind of passwords uh, people use. Um, well, sometimes uh, I, I think this is this is normal, and, the, and we cannot avoid it. And sometimes, if we if we try to uh, deny it, we are forgetting the human factor. We are forgetting that we are dealing with with human beings. And some system designers think that they can improve the the system security just yes, enforcing some. Um, Password policies, that, that they are crazy, that uh, very long passwords, uh, change them very frequently. And in this case, what, what's happened is this, that people just write the password down and put it on, on their, their screens. Um, so this is the weakest link for us. This is where companies should be investing uh, their resources to, to get the better uh, results. Um, well, we are in a biometrics conference. We, we know that uh, biometrics can be a very uh, secure and convenient method to, to uh, provide a strong authentication uh, of the user. And I'm not going to discuss all the benefits, but also problems that biometrics have. Um, but I think it's obvious that uh, they can help to prove the, the user identity. However, its use is not, it's not common between uh, ordinary people. It is mainly focused on some uh, several uh, use cases that many of which has been widely discussed here, like uh, access control or border control and military uses. Um, we think one of them, one of the, this is due to, uh, well, among other factors, of course, but this is due to the need to have um, hardware specifically designed for the purpose. So then it can only be used on very specific situations, on very specific places where the, the hardware, the sensor is installed, and sometimes, sometimes even with the help of a trained user. So, uh, well, you can say that mobile biometry already exists, and it's true, but 
again, it's limited to very specific use cases. Well, by the way, it's very curious the way that they, the, the method that they use to remove the eye slashes and, and eyelids from, from the iris. I'm wondering if the US Army has already patented it or, or not. <laughs> so that's, that's a joke, anyway. Um, well, and also the exponential growth in the use of, of mobile phones has added a new security risk. Well, in the world, there are more than 4 billion uh, mobile phones. That's almost four times the number of PCs. Well, in some countries, in some developed countries, many developed countries, uh, the, the penetration is uh, above 100%. So it means that there are more mobile phones than, than people. That, that's crazy. Um, the problem is that we, we are dealing with devices that, that store sensitive information, both personal and professional. And a recent uh, survey, uh, survey shows that 40% um, of the users will rather lose their wallet uh, before, uh, rather than the, their mobile phone. Yes. Imagine lo losing your, your wallet with your money, with your identity cards, credit cards. Well, but for a lot of users now, their mobile is, is more valuable than their, their wallet. And I think it's a trend that we cannot, we cannot stop. But mobile phones are not only a problem. They can also bring us some solutions. Um, yeah, the, the improvements in their, in their features uh, has made possible the, the development of, of technologies that were just not possible uh, a few years ago. Um, a mobile phone is uh, as powerful as uh, probably a, a PC from, a, from 10 years ago as Marco said, and it's hundreds of times more powerful than the computer that uh, guided the Apollo 11 to the moon and bring it back safe. So, of course, there are many, many limitations. Um, Marcus and, and Sebastian uh, pointed out before, but still, they are incredibly powerful machines. So, um, and, and if we take into account uh, all the built-in sensors, they can, uh, like camera, touch screens, um, uh, microphone, uh, accelerometers, GPS, they can give us a lot of information about his user. And that has made possible the, the development of a technology that is able to acquire the biometric identity of the user with the built-in sensors and it's able to process all that information and give us a reliable authentication of the user. And there is a fundamental difference between this technology and many of the technologies we have, been, we have seen here these days. And it is that it uses something that everybody carries with themselves, their mobile phones. So um, that that can allow a massive deployment of the technology and can make possible that people use it where and when they need it. Um, well, Movio has developed a speaker and, and face recognition. We have been testing several technologies, but mainly iris recognition and signature uh, recognition. And you might be wondering uh, which one is the best. So um, for me, there's no, thing, there's no a single best technology. It all depends of, of several factors. The, the three main factors for me are the kind of user and cultural environment. It's not the same uh, for a techie than for an older man. The, of course, the application, the use case we are trying to, to deal with. And also the situation, uh, even for a given user and a given application, the technology can, can be different in different situations, like a, a train or, or a conference or a very noisy place or the streets, wherever. Um, well, some use cases, but very, very quickly. For us, the most obvious use cases of this technology are those who involve uh, money transfers. 
uh, like mobile payments, and we have been talking about this before. In this case, we are trying to show how to, uh, it, can, it can be integrated with existing uh, payment platforms like such as PayPal or Google Checkout to provide an extra layer of security. Um, this example is similar, but using NFC, it was also previously mentioned, and then the user just passed the, the mobile phone in the NFC reader and then authenticate using his iris or voice or, or face or signature, and then the payment is done. And this is another example with, uh, where the user can sign a contract or, or a document uh, in a very intuitive way. Uh, the contract is sent to the mobile phone, and then the user can, can read it, and if he or she agrees, then just um, sign it the same way that uh, he or she would do it in, in person, just signing with the, on the device screen. And then, well, under the hood, a digital certificate is used to digitally sign the document and send it back, but that's, import that's not important for the user. What is important for him or her is that he, they are able to sign a contract in a matter of, of minutes uh, on the fly, while, while they are on the street or on the train or whatever. And there are many, many more, uh, from e-banking to the lockdown, just lock down the phone and protect uh, the sensitive information, or uh, access to corporate networks. Well, in general, I think um, each and every application that needs to prove the user identity in a reliable way is a perfect, uh, well, we, and without limitations of time and space, it's a perfect candidate to be integrated with this technology. Well, just to, to finish, uh, we, have, we have seen that um, the, uh, mobile biometry can help to, to, strength, to strengthen the weakest link, but is it a silver bullet? Well, I think of course not. Uh, if we have learned something in the field of security, is that there are no uh, shortcuts, no magic wands, no silver bullets. Um, for me, uh, biometric security, uh, it's, um, complement, it's a complement of uh, other existing factors rather than, uh, than, than uh, a substitute. And just to finish, how they ca it can be integrated with other uh, authentication factors. Oh, well, an increasingly um, popular way to, to raise the, the level of security is to, especially among some banks, is giving the user this kind of electronic uh, tokens. At the end, it's just something that you, uh, you only have. And you can combine them, them with, with pings, and it increases the level of, of security. But what happens if uh, some of your banks, a lot of your banks, uses uh, this kind of uh, method? Well, that's, that's, that your pocket becomes too heavy. <laughs> and I think in, in UK, some banks have uh, already implemented this solution, and one of them, Abby, uh, just said that they are not going to do it because the customers told them that they don't want more gadgets in their pockets. They want more security, but they don't want anything more in their pockets. So I'm wondering why I should carry another uh, gadget, another device, when I already carry one that is perfectly capable to do it to do this and much more. It's my, my mobile phone. So we can have a two-factor authentication very quickly with a mobile phone. And also, of course, if we combine them with biometrics, uh, as we have seen, we can have a very a highly secure uh, solution, three-factor authentication, um, something you, you know, a ping or password, something you have, your mobile phone, and something you are, and all these with the same device that you already have in your pocket. And even we can think to go and step beyond that, and we can think about four-factor four, four, four authentication. And it's something you know, something you uh, have, something you are, and somewhere you are. Well, to be honest, uh, speak about uh, location as an authentication factor is a bit of marketing. Uh, we, I mean, yeah, I'm in London, uh, so what, with 12 other million people. 
Okay, so it cannot be seen as an authentication method to uh, identify a, a person, uh, but it can provide very useful information. I mean, the last uh, attempt to, to use my credit card illegally was made from China. I'm not in China, I'm, I'm in Spain, or, or now I'm in London. So that transaction should have been rejected immediately. So that's a very valuable information. And well, just to sum up, we have seen that uh, the, the, um, the weakest link in the security chain for us are passwords and how mobile biometry can help to strengthen this weakest link and as a consequence to give the best results for the invested resources. Um, well, just to finish, I would like to, um, uh, emulating Jim Wayman from the first day, I would like to make a prediction. And it is that today we are here in the emerging biometric uh, panel, but in, in less than five years' time, it will become mainstream. And believe me, boy, it's going to be huge. Thank you very much. Thank you.